for tuning in to episode two. So one of the big questions is how come I keep getting gifts from patients? What, what is it that draws people to bring me stuff? I'm happy to tell you the reason why. So the reason why I think that people bring me things is because I listen to them. And it seems like a really simple statement, but um, I, I get to know them as a person. And I think they can tell that I genuinely care about that. I ask them personal questions outside of physical therapy, like, you know, if they have any kids or what they do for work. Um, kind of ask them more about their work if they seem passionate about it. Some people don't want to talk about work and you can kind of catch that vibe and so I don't push those people. So next is just like a few things I wanted to show you guys of all the things that patients have brought me. A lot of the common underlying theme you can tell is food. In my previous intro video I had talked about how much I love food and it just gets brought up in conversation because it's something that I love to talk about. Some people will even ask like what the what the best recommendations are in the area and so I my favorite food is Thai food and uh, people just you know, we just get into conversations about talking about what the best food is in the area, what their favorite food is, what my favorite food is. Um, then we talk about desserts, things like that. And so people maybe get inspired by that. I'm not really sure. I've never asked before, but I'm guessing us just talking about it and then them that connecting with how grateful they are with uh, what kind of services or treatment that I provide kind of makes it so that they feel like they want to give me stuff? I'm not really sure. I guess I should ask patients why they wanted to give it to me, but typically it's because they're thankful of the things that I've done for them, and that just makes me happy. I mean, it's not, I'm not doing it to get stuff out of it. It's more just to help the people uh, get better to what they want to do. So I kind of wanted to walk you through what an initial evaluation would look like in terms of the getting to know a person. So when I bring a patient back from the waiting room, I mean, I'm the one who usually brings them back because in that whole get up from a chair, walking back to the treatment room is a whole part of the PT assessment, but also I just bring them back and start something casual like, hey, how are you doing? Sometimes they have a smart answer like, you know, oh, not very good, that's why I'm here, or, you know, maybe they'll just say, you know, just something small talk, something outside of the PT's questions, because once we get into the room, we get into the nitty gritty, um, I introduce myself, I introduce myself, hi, I'm Pauline, um, I like to just be called Pauline instead of doctor, whatchamacallit, because I think that just makes our relationship more personable and then they can feel like they can talk to me at the same level, although they know that I'm their PT. So then once I get them in the treatment room, I usually have like an intake paperwork that has information that they already filled out about what they're doing here, like what body part hurts when it started, um, things that make it feel worse, things that make it feel better, and so I kind of use my questioning based off those answers so that they know that the time that it took for them to fill that out um, was worthwhile, valuable, um, so that way they're not repeating themselves because sometimes it'll be like, I ask them a question, they're like, oh, it's already on the paper. Why do you need to ask me that? So I've learned just to use that an those answers as a way to frame my next question and how to make that question really specific as well. So instead of saying, what brings you in here? I can say, oh, I see you hurt your low back and it happened about three days ago. Tell me more about what led you to that incident or led you to that pain. So that way I'm guiding the conversation. So when I bring your patient back, I have them come in and sit down in a chair and then I sit down with them, kind of get down onto their level, either I'm on the treatment table or on the stool right across from them, so that when I'm asking them questions, I'm not standing and looking down at them, rather I'm at their level and so we're having a conversation more, um, more comfortable. So then after we gather more information, I'm doing what's called second level listening. I'm giving them, you know, the time to pause in between their sentences. I'm making sure that they finish what they have to say. I'm being really careful not to interrupt what they're saying. There are some chatty Cathy's and they just keep talking and, you know, they just start rambling. You know, we have some patients that go all the way back to like when I was a kid and then they're like 60, 70 years old. It's like, okay, wait, we gotta bring, we gotta bring the conversation back to what brings you here today. 
and instead of paraphrasing back what you heard, kind of take those key pieces and turn it into a question so that you can get more information about what you're really trying to get from them. So then you tie it back to, you know, what, at the end you want to make sure that you heard, you gathered their goals. And so you tie in their functional goals. Okay, I heard that you say that sitting down for more than 10 minutes is hard for you, getting up from a chair after sitting for more than 30 minutes, and then also getting in and out of your car. Are these the functional goals that you would like to set for yourself as well? And so that way I, I'm really explicit. I have objective findings. I have numbers tied to it versus just a statement of sitting. I want I want to sit better. It's You want to sit better for more than 10, you want to sit longer than 10 minutes. You want to be able to transition from sitting for more after sitting for 30 minutes, things like that. So that way you have really explicit, it's very clear objective findings so that you know whether you've hit that target and when it's time to progress that goal into maybe instead of sitting for 10 minutes, you want to sit now for 20 minutes. And then from 20 minutes becomes 30 minutes, something, and then it just so forth after that. In a future episode, I'm going to talk about how we want to tie goals into function versus pain, but this is the best time to do that now is during the initial eval so that they can have that mindset moving forward into the future sessions. And then that gives them an opportunity to bring up goals that maybe they didn't get to bring up. It's like, oh yeah, I do want to sit better, but also I want to be able to go hiking. You tell them what you heard, and then they're also impressed that, oh yeah, I didn't say that, but you know, you were able to gather that information and create those goals for me so that I can um, work towards those, look at, look at those as measurements towards progress. After I've reviewed their goals with them, then I finally give them the opportunity to ask questions. Maybe they have questions about what's going to what's going to happen, what's going to, you know, maybe they have one more thing that they forgot to tell you. This gives them the opportunity. So then the way that I phrase that question is, is there anything else that you think I need to know about your case? Or is there anything else you want to share with me before we move forward? So that way it's open-ended. They have the opportunity to throw in things that, you know, you didn't specifically because the rest of your questions were so specific that it didn't give them the opportunity to to drop in that one piece of knowledge that they had saved to tell you about. So make sure that you also incorporate that as well. At some point during the initial visit, I also like to ask people if they've ever been to physical therapy before. A lot of people haven't. People don't know what we're about to do, it, that there's going to be touching involved, and uh, so it's good to kind of frame what the rest of the session is going to look like. Uh, the way that I usually say it is, all right, so if you haven't been to physical therapy before, today's the initial evaluation. What we're going to do today is after I ask you these series of questions is then we're going to go into some tests and measurements. I'm going to see how you move and then we'll gather that information and come up with a diagnosis and tell you what your problem is and how, and then we'll create a plan on how to fix that problem as well. It's really important that you speak to your patients at their level. There's a function on Microsoft Word that says like what reading level you're at. They always try to target us at sixth grade level reading or writing. Um, so that's kind of the level that you should be trying to talk to your patients at. They don't need to know what degenerative disc, like scary big words like that. It's just, they just need to know what's wrong. Your back pain is lead is because of this, or, you know, instead of your lumbar one through whatever, one, one through one, two, and three, it's like, okay, you don't need to tell them exactly the levels because for some reason people really stick to that and they get really worried and then they go home and they Google what the heck you just said and then there's going to be a whole list of really big bad things that are associated with that so try to get to the diagnosis you want to let them know that you know what's going on but you also don't want to get them stuck into a wormhole of holy crap this is what I have and I'm it's the end of the world I'm never going to get better so for example if you have someone with knee pain you want to say your knee pain is driven by you know tightness in a couple of the structures out here some weakness of these specific muscles and we can get those better the expectation of that to get better is xyz and you know we have a plan to do that and then you go into how often you want them to come in and see you do frequency and duration but then it flows really smoothly Make sure they get all of their questions answered. So make sure that you're explaining kind of 
in layman's terms as best as you can and it definitely takes practice but make sure that you're practicing it each time and then it'll get smoother and smoother the more you go and then making sure that they're clarifying questions and if they do that they have your business card or contact information so that they can ask you those follow-up questions directly versus having them you know not know the answer and then google it themselves and then they come up with again that scary answer just make sure that your patients know what's going on make sure that they don't have questions make sure that they're feeling heard and that you're being personable with them you know it's i use their name several times within a session i call them by their first name and that helps me remember who they are and then they also are recognized as not just another patient, but that as another individual in your office and that you're trying, you're making an effort to get to know them. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in to this episode. I look forward to making some more for you guys. I have so much that I want to share. It's been really fun for me to make this information for you all to watch. Please comment below if there's anything specific that you want to see or want to learn more about. If you feel like you learned something, great to give me a thumbs up. If you love what you've heard, please subscribe below so that you don't miss out on the next episode. Thanks for watching, everyone.